Hello, welcome to my house and welcome to my channel. I'm Laura Cepeda and today I'm going to show you how you can make this beautiful blouse or poncho. Please let me know how should we call this beautiful project that I made for this coming event. Well, in Mexico it's very important Mother's Day, so I made it so you can wear it or make it as a gift. Please let me know in your country when you celebrate this date. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe. Well, for this blouse in a large size, we are going to use 300 grams. 200 grams will be in shades of blue, purple and green and 100 grams in purple. This material will be between fine and light material and we will use the hook of number 3.5 millimeters. Well this blouse will be created by many flowers so we are going to make many of them. First we will start making five chains and we'll also at the end I will tell you how many I made exactly to create this beautiful blouse. Well at the end of the five rows of the five chains sorry we will close in circle and then we are going to go up with three chains then three chains more and we will turn over and insert the hook right inside and make right there a double crochet. Then again three chains yarn over and in the same place inside of the circle a double crochet again three chains and inside of the circle a double crochet as you could see while I make this I crochet over the thread that we used to start to hide it and we'll also we are going to count like this here we have one two three four and I want to have six double crochet like this. So here let's make five, then three chains, and here we have six. Six double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. At the end we are going to finish the row with three chains and we are going to slip one to close right here to finish. So well here to start with the next row we are going to slip one right here inside and from here we will go up first with three chains for off the double crochet plus three chains that we will make between double crochet and double crochet in the same place a uh, double crochet so this will be one B right so like this one we are going to make six okay and between the B's we are going to make three chains and on also between double crochet we are going to make three chains. So please count that at the end you must have six bees like this one. Three chains and a double crochet. So like this the whole row. So look right here. As you could see, please check that at the end of this row you have six bees. Okay, so once you are sure, we are going to slip one to close like this. And now to start with the next row, I want to start in the middle of the last bee right here. So we are going to do this trick. We are going to turn around and we are going to slip one and do right here to arrive to the middle again turn around and now that we are here we are ready to start so we will turn over and right in the next space of the next B we are going to make a double crochet here in this part I suggest that you don't crochet too tight please enjoy and loose a little bit well inside we are going to make six double crochet so right here we are going to make a shell so here we have six then in the next space we are going to make a single crochet then right away in the next B again we are going to make six double crochet as you could see we are making this double crochet normal out of two crochet 
like we used to. Okay, like the simple double crochet. And then in the next space, a single crochet like this, we are going to have six shells. Okay, so remember, all the shells will be inside of the bees. And then to close, we are going to make a single crochet. At the end, please count that you have six. And remember also to lose a little bit here in this part and not tie too much. So like this is how we are going to continue the whole row. Well, and here we have our first flower. At the end, we are going to slip on to close. And like this one, we are going to make more, okay? At the end, I will tell you how many I made to create this blouse. Remember that I'm making this blouse for me. I'm a large size. So take that into account. Probably for a smaller size, you will need less flowers, right? So we are going to make more like this one. And right now, I will show you with the plain color, with the purple we are going to make some rows around and while we make these rows also we are going to join remember that i always like to blend the stitch with the joint okay but beside that every time that we finish a flower we are going to make this row okay later i will show you how we are going to join it with the same stitch but well first things first when we finish each flower with the plain color, we are going to make a single crochet over each double crochet. We are going to make them a little bit loose, okay? Because if we crochet too tight in this step, we may have the spoon effect and we want to avoid that, okay? So please relax and crochet a little bit loose. If you feel that you still crochet, too tight will change the number of your hook in a bigger number okay so one over each double crochet and right here in the joint when we finish we are going to slip one to close okay so look how beautiful it looks so again one single crochet here and one over each double crochet and we'll also please take into account that this technique can be useful for any other project that you have, maybe for a poncho, for a blanket, for um, what else, a vest, or anything else, it will be useful. So it's interesting that you are learning with me today with this beautiful technique. Like this is how we are going to continue all around the row and I will show you what it's next so i did get ahead and i have this small piece that i made and as you could see we are in this row making this single crochet row and then we are going to make this stitch to join with the rest of the flowers so well i will finish to make this row and see you there Okay, so we are in this step. So imagine that you already made some flowers like this one and that you are ready to join. So what we are going to uh, make is that we are going to slip one and two. So we are going to slip one, two, three. And here we are about to arrive to the half. We are going to make six chains. And right here, where we finish to slip one, you see at the same distance, we are going to make a single crochet. And then at the same distance, we are going to make the next wave. And like this is how we are going to continue. So here again, we are going to make six chains. And between these two segments, we are going to make single crochet. Then six chains right here in the top, single crochet. And like this is how we are going to continue. So as you could see, we have two, two, two waves. And like this is how we are going to make in each uh, petal, Let, let's call. So here we have one. Then the next one between the next two segments. Remember to count and have six. Here I was about to skip some chains. So please pay attention. Like I'm talking, I sometimes I like get distracted 
So now that we complete the part of the flower with these waves, we are going to join like this. I want to make a long strip that covers part of my uh, neck, okay? And this blouse will be in diagonal. So I will join one, two, and three like we made here. So also here we are going to join it three times. So we are going to make three joints. So we are going to skip this wave and right here is where we are going to insert the hook. So while we crochet we are going to complete the stitch so that's why we only made three chains here. Then we are going to slip one, then we are going to come back and complete the six chains and right in the top of the next wave a single crochet. So as you could see while we join we are going to come back and complete the stitch of the flower that we are making. So we are going to join right here. So again we are going to make just a half of the six chains. So we are going to make three and we are going to slip one. So with this one we will have the second joint. Then three chains and we are going to come back to the flower and complete the stitch. So again a slip one, then three chains and with we are going to come back to this piece and slip one to join and with this one we will have the third joint. Then three chains and we are going to come back to the flower to complete the stitch. So here we are already joined. You see we have three joints. One we and we perfectly match the sides of the flowers. You see also pay attention that you are joining them facing both to the right side. And well the way you fix and you organize your flowers will depend of the shape that you want. In this case as you have seen in the color and in the picture I will make a blouse in diagonal so I will have cover one part of my shoulder and the other one will only have one strap so I will fix and I will manage to have the flowers join by certain points but always three by three okay so you will see so far what I will make first is that I will complete a long strip of flowers joined that covers all around my neck and part of my body in diagonal okay and then we are going to join more flowers in the bottom to give a structure and shape of the design that I want but this will be up to you for now let's complete first this long strip like this and also I will tell you how many centimeters does this strip measure. Remember, remember that this is for me, this is for my size, so it will depend. But I will give you the centimeters so you can have them as a reference. Once we join, you are going to continue to complete the rest of the stitch. Please count how many waves do you have in each flower so you can have the same number. Also, take into account that each wave will have or arch like you want to call it will have six chains okay and we are going to continue all around uh, the flowers making this so um, you are going to make more flowers like this one if you want you can make first all the flowers and then you can make with a plain color this extra rose and join two. But also give me time to make more and I will tell you exactly how many flowers I made. Okay, so you can continue. So like this is how we are going to continue join it. Remember to count how many arches or um, waves do you have in each flower so you can join. Here at the end once you are sure you are going to cut and bring them through and make one chain to rows. So now we are going to join right here the next flower with the stitch with plain color and count how many spaces do you have and also match perfectly all the petals. So take that into account. We are going to put one here. 
Well, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And in the second strip, we have the same number. So I already joined. And we are going to figure out together how we are going to join. Like I want it like in diagonal, I'm going to join it like this. I will match this flower with this one. Okay, to have something like this. And then I will complete more flowers but in the bottom, okay? The top I will just leave it like this. Because if we close it like this, we will have a circular poncho and I don't want that. If you want, you can continue like this and join it it's straight and matching all the flowers. But we are making a different design and a different uh, blouse. So I will continue um, completing more flower spot in the bottom. Well, so here I join the same way I join the rest. And here in the top I have nine flowers okay so i will leave the, the top like this and here i will complete more flowers to close and to get more structured my blouse right so i will make more flowers and i will join the same way but well so far i will continue making more flowers well so i did get ahead and so far i have this uh, blouse this down or blouse or this diagonal poncho how can we call it i don't know but we are making something so beautiful and different and i hope that you all enjoy making it with me so here i complete we were so far here right so all around we have nine with the last one that we joined with the last flower that we joined we have nine so i joined and if we count we have four strips in horizontal that we joined and so far we have this the last flowers that i made i only made with a uh, one yarn because of the plain color i don't have too much left and i want to use it to decorate it too and well also in the way that i place it and i extend it we can put our head right in top right and we can have one side in horizontal and the other sides asymmetrical but this will be up to you in this part i suggest that you try on and see which, sh which shape you like the most okay so you can decide where to put in this trap and while you make this you can see if you need to put more flowers or no and well this is other way i already try on and i feel that i like how it looks like this way okay but please try on and you will decide so for example um we were here remember and then i continue joining as i show you and this is the bottom this is how it looks so we are going to this will be this will cover part of my body here i will have one shoulder and here the other um sleeve and right here i will put one strap that will be over my shoulder so it will be like in diagonal i don't know if here you can tell but once i try it you will see how it looks so far it's looking so beautiful we are going to make the last rows and i will show you how we are going to decorate it and also once we iron it it will change so much and it will look so much better you will see for now, let's continue. I will show you what's next. So let's make the straps. Okay, for the straps, we are going to make some cords. You will decide how many chains do you need. In my case, I will make 50 chains with one, with one thread and with a hook. So like this, 50. Well, at the end of the 50, chains we are going to come back and slip one in each each stitch <laughs> sorry and like this is how we are going to slip one and we are going to create a round cord you will see how beautiful it is so we will go in order please don't skip any space like this well like these cords we are going to make 
two more chords. Okay, we are going to leave long threads at the end because later we will use these threads to sew. So as you could see with the same number of chains and everything, I made three. So we are going to use these cords for the straps. I think that it will be a good idea to make a knot right here, right in the middle, to make the strap different and to give it a different detail. So I don't know what you think. And then we are going to use these threads to sew. I will show you. Well, so I already try on. I'm sorry. I already try on. And here I think it's perfect for me to put this strap. It's very important that you try on first. You can put some markers to point it out exactly where you want to put the straps and where you want to join them and then try on and see, look at the mirror if you like it or no, okay? Also at the same distance in the other side in the back, we are going to sew and uh, use the same spaces to join, okay? So with then and ready and needle and with the threads that we left in hold, we are going to sew. So we are going to make some stitches like this, okay? And remember, we are going to join the third strip right here. We will use these three different uh, arches to join. So we will use them to uh, put the straps right there. And we are going to make the same in the other side, in the back. Well, then to the grade, we are going to make some pom-poms. Remember that I like to use this technique. If you have a cardboard or something that you can take as a reference, you can do it. So we are going to wrap around our fingers 10 times, okay? So like this, we are going to uh, hold these strips that we, sorry, these uh, threads that we have here. And with the same threads, we are going to Got two more threads, we will use one to make a knot and we will use the second thread to make a head for our pom pom. This technique I like to use it because it's very simple and you will see that it will give it a different touch to your blouse In and we are going to place them in the bottom. This is optional. Um, this is up to you if you want to make the pom pom or if you want to make a different a uh, stitch for the bottom or like you wish it's perfectly okay and if you have watched my videos you know that I always uh, teach you this technique because it's very simple and cute so this we are going to wrap this other thread all around right here to make a small head of our bone bone here we are going to make a knot Later, I will show you a trick because we are going to use the hook and we will hide all these threads and then these threads will be part of the uh, fringes of our pom pom. You will see. So now with these threads, we will use them to sew the pom poms with the bottom part of our blouse. So we are going to decide where to place them. Probably we will put one here and then I will skip one wave or right here in the uh, bottom of each flower. You will decide, okay? Also, you will decide how many pompons do you want to put all around. So I will see where I will place them. I think that I will put one here and then I will skip some spaces and then I will put one in another place. Also, I decided to put pom-poms because this plain color wasn't enough for an extra stitch. So take that also into account that probably you will need 150 grams if you want to make it larger or to make more flowers. So keep that in mind. I will take a different hook, I guess, so it could fit right here. Well, 
So here I have a smaller hook so I can perfectly fit because I want to show you this trick that I know that you might have watched it in my previous videos. So these small tricks make the difference so your products can look so beautiful and sometimes you wonder how people do it, right? Well, this is the secret. Also, we are going to take these uh, threads that we uh, have it as part of or not and we are going to bring them through also like this okay through all these threads that we have so now we are ready to cut and well I will make more I will tell you and you will see in the in the pictures how many I made this is optional remember so at the end we are going to cut all these threads like this and we will have something like this. At the end to finish, it's very important that every time that you f that you finish a project, you iron it. I always suggest that you put a protection under a towel or so. You extend your project in the table and you put some pins. So the first time you iron, it's the most important, okay? So you can put some pins and extend the flowers how you want them to be and you will tell the difference also put a humid fabric under the iron so it won't damage and it will have a beautiful ending so now let's see how it looks well so here it is i hope that you all have enjoyed making this blouse with me please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to leave me a comment and don't forget to share this video if you like it Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video and I hope that you make it in all the sizes and colors.